All right, if you haven't already given ZSH a shot by this point, I don't know what's gonna convince you to try it, but to just list out some of the benefits over Bash, okay? It's far more modular, it's far more extensible, it's got a native plugin system, it's got smarter completion, which you can actually fully customize if you wanna do that. It's got more options, it's got shared history, it's got auto suggestions, tons of other stuff. Essentially, use it. Here's my configuration. I've got it in two files here and Essentially, as with most programs, you're gonna have one file that gets read first, another file that gets read second, etc. There's usually an order to which uh, configuration files are read. So Z profile here is read first. ZSHRC, which has all of the main ZSH settings, is read second. And in terms of what you'll want with settings, you're gonna wanna load modules and load plugins because by default, um, since it's modular, it doesn't load everything. You're gonna tell it what you want it to load and only load that. Um, you're also gonna want uh, options set if you want that. And and then the basic other shell stuff like prompt, binding keys, um, environment variables, etc. So to start with in my ZSHRC, I'm gonna start with this since this is you know the main settings, right? Um, I'm actually technically sourcing two other files, so sorry, I did I did technically lie there. I have two other files getting sourced, which are just global um, shell alias and variables files. Since I have these set globally, since you're probably not going to be running shell scripts with ZSH, you're probably going to want to stick to bash or maybe even dash for speed uh, with running shell scripts. So if you want global aliases and global variables for that, have them in separate files. So um, alias and variable files are going to get checked to see whether they exist and then source. And then next up, I'm loading modules. So I'm loading ZSH completion, which, um, like I said, you can completely customize the completion if you wanted to do that. You can literally write your own custom completions. Um, I'm pretty much fine with the defaults. Um, I just have a couple options set with completion. I'm also loading up colors. And if you didn't already know, ZSH actually has a Tetris module built in, along with some other fun games actually built in. But um, since it's modular, that's not going to get loaded by default. You can load it in if you want to, and then you just have Tetris automatically there in ZSH. So if that doesn't convince you to use it, I don't know it will. Anyways, um, options next up. So completion options um, tab opens the completion menu. So if I want to, you know, CD to a directory that starts with like .c and then I press tab, I can go through and I've got, you know, my different directories here. And you can actually see it's automatically going to complete that first one for me to make it faster. A um, couple other completion options, so setting the colors there for the highlight color, etc. Um, main options, I've tried to add comments on pretty much everything here, so it should tell you pretty much what it does. Um, auto CD is really nice. You can automatically CD into a directory without actually typing CD, uh, but honestly, I still type CD from muscle memory quite a lot. Um, other options, um, better globbing, interactive comments, so you can actually comment directly in the shell if you wanted to. Um, not auto cleaning blank lines. So if I were to like echo test there, we've got a blank line after the word test. So um, by disabling the auto clean blank lines it's saying leave that blank line there don't automatically clean that um, and then everything else probably self-explanatory moving the history file into cache um, this is for xdg uh, specification compliancy there which i will get to since i am kind of a firm believer in that um, a la luke smith since he i think was the first one to make that really popular um, uh, on youtube at least so anyways xdg compliancy i am a fan of that um, FCF, so if you do have FCF Fuzzy Finder, um, there's a history widget. So normally you would like press control R and then you would get, you know, history there that you could go through. FCF has a widget specifically for that. So you can fuzzy find in your history if you wanted to use that. So you can source that here to set that up. Key bindings, pretty much what you would expect. Um, if you want to view a list of binds actually, so things that you could bind, um, just use zle-al, and then you've got a whole list here. Um, and I actu actually should mention, um, set-o is gonna give you a list of options. So you can, you know, type that into less, have a look at the options you could set and what you have enabled versus disabled. Um, so those are probably the main commands you're gonna wanna know for how to figure out what you wanna configure. I've got a small thing here to open um, file manager with control F. Probably wanna comment this out if you're not using FFF. Um, and then just setting prompt. I was experimenting briefly with actually setting my prompt from Pywall colors with a post run script, uh, but I decided against that since generally, you know, just keeping uh, static colors on the prompt, I, I prefer that. So um, that's setting up my prompt there. And then the thing above the prompt there as well with the shell, the uptime, and then the kernel. And then the last thing you're gonna want, um, and do keep this last, is loading up your plugins. 
So with plugins, you could either install them manually. Um, you could go with a plugin manager if you wanted to do that. I personally don't since it's far less minimal and you know, I like keeping things minimal. So there's two main plugins you might want being auto suggestions and syntax highlighting. I personally don't really like auto suggestions, but if you're used to, you know, fish, for example, auto suggestions is very similar to that. I actually installed it just to quickly demonstrate how it works. So if I go ahead and write that, um, if I, uh, here, let me make this so you can actually see it. If I echo, so it actually already shows, I already did echo test, but if I echo, you know, some random stuff and then I type echo, we've got that auto suggestion there. So that's auto suggestions if you want that. I'm probably gonna just go ahead and uninstall it though since I personally don't really like auto suggestions. Anyways, that's my ZSHRC, pretty much all the main stuff there. And then Z profile, which again is gonna get read first, has all of the environment set up in it. And now is probably a good time to actually go over what XDG specification is, if you don't already know what it is. It's essentially saying have standard locations for all of your configuration, cache, uh, data location, etc. Um, these are the main directories here that you're gonna wanna have this standard configuration for. So XDG config home, cache home, data home, etc. Um, state home and runtime directory. I personally don't have these set. You could set them if there's a reason to, uh, but these three are pretty much the main ones. Um, and it's not only for cleaning up your home directory, but it's also for just ease of access for files, right? Because if you know that configuration for programs is always gonna be in .config, it makes it way, way easier to find something rather than sort of having to guess, oh, is it gonna be in my home directory? Is it gonna be in .config, etc. And the ArchWiki here, as usual, is very helpful. Um, it's got a full list of what programs actually support this by default, uh, programs that support this partially, meaning you're actually gonna have to configure it, hence what all of this configuration is, and then programs that have stuff hard-coded, which sadly, some programs still do have uh, hard-coded directories, notably uh, Firefox and LibreWolf. So yeah, you're gonna get a .mozilla directory if you're using either Firefox or LibreWolf. I think LibreWolf also has a .librewolf directory, so that's gonna sit in your home directory, unfortunately, and then anything else on this list uh, for the hard-coded section here is hard-coded. Uh, but the partial section is what you're gonna wanna configure in terms of moving things. And of course, the ArchWiki gives you a helpful set of instructions in terms of exactly what you'll need to move um, for the various partially supported programs. So that is what this whole section is here. It's moving the files for these programs into the XDG compliant directories for them. Um, the other stuff going on here, just setting default programs, if you have a reason to do that. The export display zero. So if you have any scripts that you need display with um, and you're not setting it manually there, you could set it as an environment variable here. Pretty much preference for where you want it set. Um, so you can actually set up the XDG base directory specification. Just set it up here for XDG config, data, cache, or any others if you need to do that. Um, in terms of ZSH itself, so Z profile actually has to sit in your home directory. Um, you'll want either Z profile or a Z ENV um, that tells ZSH where to send everything else. So you can export your Z dot directory. Um, so dot config ZSH, and then I've got my dot ZSHRC. This is just in dot config there. If you have any other ZSH files, then they can also go in that ZSH folder there. So that way they're not cluttering up your home directory, but you will need one file in your home directory for ZSH in order to essentially bootstrap everything else to the XDG directory for it. Um, I send my history files into cache. Um, this is just adding my scripts folder into the path. So you could switch this to whatever folder you um, wanna be adding to your path there. Um, the only other stuff is just FCF options. Um, you can actually have a separate set of FCF options for the control R history uh, widget there. Um, no sort and no preview are useful for that since no sort is gonna allow it to just have that default history sorting. No preview since you're, it's just command, so there's nothing to preview. Probably don't want the preview window there. Um, exporting the man pager colors. So if you do want man pager colors, I actually made a whole video about this. Um, I have it disabled now since I don't really like it, but um, if you do want colored man pages, I'll link that in the description so you can figure out how to do that. Um, and then just less term crap variables if you want uh, less colors. And that's pretty much all the main stuff going on here. The only other thing, like I said, is just the alias and variables files, which I will also upload those to my GitHub if you wanna get, you know, aliases for stuff. I gotta clean it up since I have like a bunch of aliases for like specific stuff, you know, my own directories that wouldn't apply to you. But other than that, these two files, if you wanna take them, you can go ahead, steal them if you want to, or just use them, modify them, change them. Anyways, hope this helped you out and I'll see you next time. Peace.